Pues yo creo que este caso viene a evidenciar el México real y todos estos hechos están marcados por la impunidad. Estamos hablando de que los cuerpos estuvieron tirados, los heridos estuvieron desangrándose por más de cinco horas. This is the Angel of Independence Monument on Paseo de la Reforma, the most important, most symbolic avenue here in Mexico City. Right now, thousands of people have gathered to protest the disappearance of 43 teaching students in the southern state of Guerrero and the killing of six others. Most of them are all enrolled in one school, the Altinapa Normal School. Now, this school is known nationally for its ardently leftist uh, beliefs and practices. This case has stunned Mexico to new levels of outrage and anger expressed over this matter. And while the president of Mexico, Enrique Peña Nieto, has promised that justice will be served in this case, right now the Ayotzinapa normal school students and many human rights defenders and uh, supporters in many cities across Mexico are gathering today uh, to protest the case that seems to point to the utter corruption and the lack of rule of law that seems to pervade Mexico even to this day. We're standing at the monument for Mexico's national flag here in the city of Iguala, Guerrero. And historically, the city is known in Mexico as the birthplace of the national flag. Now, of course, it is known as a site of tragedy. We're here to understand how this incident occurred and what Mexico's authorities are doing uh, to respond to it. On the afternoon of September 26, a group of about 100 students from the Ayotzinapa Normal School traveled in a caravan of buses to the city of Iguala, about two hours north. These buses were not officially rented, but commandeered by the students in a practice that had become commonplace. The students were headed to Iguala to take over more buses they said they needed to attend an upcoming protest in Mexico City. At about 9 p.m., the student's caravan was heading out of the city when they were cut off by police cars. Then the firing started. Police shot indiscriminately toward the three buses. Ernesto Guerrero, one of the survivors of the police attack, told us what happened that night. When we crossed the Zócalo, the first patrullas and they started to action their weapons. They intercepted the third autobus in which I was going, and immediately they started to disparar. Después nos empezamos a defender con piedras nosotros, con lo que encontramos. Y aparte les gritábamos que por qué nos disparaban si nosotros no teníamos armas. ¡No tenemos armas! ¡No tenemos armas! ¡No tenemos armas, señor! ¡Estamos del fútbol! ¿Por qué está apuntando, pues? ¿Por qué apunta? The only visual record of the shootout is this video shot by one of the students on his cell phone. ¡Te estoy grabando, cabrón! ¡Apunta, apunta! ¡Te estoy grabando! ¡Que te vean! Como la punta de estudiantes. Ojalá ya si fuera con los narcos. Y nos cierra el paso. Adelante policías, atrás patrullas, nos empiezan a rafaguear por todos lados. ¡Eh! ¡Ya mataron un compañero! ¡Ya mataron a uno! Nos empiezan a rafaguear. A mi compañero Aldo inmediatamente le dieron en la cabeza. Cayó. Actualmente está con muerte cerebral. ¡Eh, ¡Hey, oficial! Necesitamos una ambulancia para un compañero. Una ambulancia! Traigan aquí la ambulancia! Many students fled, but others could not get away. Iguala police officers were loading them onto police vehicles. A todos los compañeros que se llevaron solo del tercer autobús fueron sometidos, encañonados, tirados en la banqueta. Después un policía se encargaba de decir tú, tú, tú y tú, arriba. ¿En qué? ¿En dónde los? Patrullas. Se los llevaron en patrullas de la policía municipal. These students being loaded onto police vehicles would later total 43. And these young teacher trainees have not been heard from since. Several hours later, around midnight, local reporters and human rights investigators arrived at the scene. Then a second round of gunfire erupted, coming from unidentified men in trucks. Three innocent bystanders in a separate bus and in a taxi were killed. Vidulfo Rosales, a leading attorney at the Tlachinolan Human Rights Center in Guerrero said flagrant violations of basic rights occurred that night in Iguala. Una vez se da la primera agresión, pasan cuatro horas y no hay ninguna intervención, hay una total inacción 
del Estado para tomar medidas preventivas, para cercar el lugar, proteger el lugar y proteger a la gente que está ahí. Y después hay una segunda agresión y después de la segunda agresión vuelven a pasar otras cuatro horas para que las autoridades se hagan presentes. Estamos hablando de que los cuerpos estuvieron tirados, los heridos estuvieron desangrándose por más de cinco horas. Eso nos habla de una indolencia en contra de, de, de los estudiantes de Ayotzinapa. Rural normal schools like this one in Ayotzinapa are academies established in impoverished areas to help train future teachers. Historically, they have been at the forefront of many social movements and are often organized around communist principles. Concretamente, contra la normal hay una estigmatización ¿no? y hay una tendencia a la criminalización de la normal. Hay una tendencia a el desmantelamiento de ese tipo de educación porque no responde obviamente al modelo económico implementado hoy día por este gobierno. To understand the roots of those conflicts, we traveled here to the Raúl Isidro Burgos Ayotzinapa Normal School. We wanted to understand the school's history and its state of affairs now. Un requisito para ingresar a las normales rurales, no solamente de aquí, sino a nivel país, el requisito principal es ser hijo de campesino. Y si no eres hijo de campesino, por lo menos ser hijo de pobres. Soy del estado de Guerrero. Aquí estoy estudiando la licenciatura en educación primaria. We met another student representative, Uriel Gomez, who agreed to show us around the Ayotzinapa campus and the rooms where some of the missing students slept. Aquí, aquí dormimos, comemos. Se nos da cobijas, se nos da todo, pero pues ahora sí que es muy escaso, ¿no? Lo que se nos da. Pedimos camas, colchones, los materiales, más que nada lo, lo más importante, ¿no? Por ejemplo, estas son las salas de los compañeros de, de primer grado. No hay chapas, tenemos que ponerle candados. Por ejemplo, aquí los compañeros duermen en el piso, no hay camas, no hay este, lockers, todo es aquí en el piso donde duermen ellos. Aquí es el cuarto de, de unos compañeros que todavía aún se encuentran desaparecidos. Como pueden ver, sus cosas todavía están aquí, sus tenis, su ropa, sus maletas. Y pues ahora sí que nada más de ver que los compañeros no están nos da mucha tristeza, ¿no? Quisiéramos que ellos estuvieran aquí, trabajar juntos en el campo, todos alegres, riendo. Y pues ahorita nada más de ver que los compañeros nada más están sus cosas y no sabemos, pues ahora sí que es algo que da, da mucho coraje y a la vez da mucha tristeza. Porque son 43 compañeros, 43 vidas. Y pues, ¿qué más quisiéramos que estuvieran de regreso, no? These are some of the many murals that adorn the Ayotzinapa Normal School campus. This individual here is Lucio Cabañas who was a guerrilla leader here in Guerrero, actually a graduate of this normal school. They have messages of revolution, of struggle, and of memory for the victims of previous government acts of repression that have occurred against these students. El Estado siempre ha visto a Yotzinapa como un foco rojo, no solamente en Guerrero, sino en toda la nación. Porque aquí, los que estudiamos aquí, se nos da la facilidad de ponernos al tú por tú con quien sea de responderla a quien sea, de mirar a los ojos a quien sea, de saber defendernos. Confrontations between Ayotzinapa students and the authorities had become constant over the years. In fact, the attack in Iwala wasn't the first time that authorities in Guerrero have opened fire against Ayotzinapa students. On December 12, 2011, an Ayotzinapa blockade of the federal highway between Mexico City and the coastal resort of Acapulco ended in bloodshed when state judicial police shot and killed two students. Another man was seriously burned after the protester set fire to a gas station and weeks later he died of his injuries. Yo creo que hay hitos en la, en la historia de, de Guerrero ¿no? que nos, nos van estableciendo momentos históricos de cómo fueron ocurriendo las masacres. Y detrás de la impunidad tenemos un gobierno autoritario, un gobierno caciquil, ¿no? y un gobierno federal que avala esas actuaciones. ¿no? This is Juan Álvarez Street. This is the street where the students, the normalistas, were stopped by municipal police. The initial shooting occurred on this street as three of the buses were coming up this way to get to this main avenue. And this is where the shootings occurred. 
The police ambush in Iwala, where six people were killed and 43 students were disappeared, understandably shocked Mexico. But if police officers carried out the attack, then someone likely ordered them to do it. José Luis Abarca became mayor of Iwala in 2012. On September 26, the day of the attack, his wife, Maria de los Ángeles Pineda, was scheduled to hold a political event meant to bolster her chances to succeed her husband as mayor in 2015. According to accounts by federal investigators, Abarca ordered the police to stop the Ayotzinapa students from potentially disrupting his wife's event. As he and Pineda danced with Iwala residents just a few blocks away, municipal police were opening fire on the buses. The mayor's wife, prosecutors later said, had family links to a local drug gang called Guerreros Unidos, or United Warriors. Guerreros Unidos had split from the larger Beltran Leyva cartel and is involved in marijuana and poppy production in Guerrero. Federal officials called the mayor's wife the chief operator of the cartel inside Iguala City Hall, allegedly funneling money from the gang to the police. On September 28, 22 municipal police officers were placed under arrest in connection to the Iguala shootings. On September 30th, four days after the police attacks, José Luis Abarca requested a leave of absence, and soon after, he and his wife vanished. Since the students disappeared, volunteer search parties began scouting the hillsides around Iguala in search for any sign of them. These volunteers belong to a community police force that emerged in recent years in the state and is known by its Spanish acronym, UPOEG. They told us the authorities were useless in the search for the missing students and that they would not stop until they found the students themselves. Nuestro operativo consiste en la búsqueda de los jóvenes desaparecidos, asesinados, en lugares donde no ha ido el ejército ni la marina. Ya, ya vimos que la gente más confianza nos tiene, que hemos venido aquí sin armas, sin idea de estarnos enfrentando con el gobierno. No, nosotros venimos nada más en plan de búsqueda de estos jóvenes desaparecidos. A few days later, the first of the mass graves around Iguala was found. We went to check out one of these graves with a group of UPOEG volunteer searchers. This area is called Pueblo Viejo. Uh, behind me, this hill right here and that one is where the first of the mass graves that may be linked to the case of these missing 43 students is located. And locals basically know this area and these hills behind me as a clandestine cemetery. These hillsides, according uh, to the state police officer, is basically the territory of at least four different criminal groups that operate here in Guerrero. One of them, of course, would be Los Guerreros Unidos. I can only imagine uh, the fear and the terror that any victim might have felt walking up here on this march of death to a grave where they were placed and, uh, and buried along with dozens of other people. So this is what it has come to in the state of Guerrero. Here you have um, civilians, a community police force, volunteers without weapons, conducting their own search for possible victims of the Iguala police attack. Nosotros somos pueblo. No somos policía de la policía de esto que usted conoce. O sea, puede confiar en nosotros, ¿por qué? Porque nosotros somos del pueblo y somos para el pueblo. We're sitting here waiting for human rights workers to come up here and verify and begin documenting the, the discovery of this other grave uh, that may or may not be related to the case of the missing um, Normalista students. But in any case, reflects what has been said before that Mexico itself has become a clandestine grave. And while these men are up here volunteering and searching for victims on their own, Mexico's government is essentially playing catch up to the work of volunteers as we're seeing today. Creo que es una fosa que encontramos aquí. Y le estamos excavando, vimos que estaba ancho. A lo mejor hay alguien ahí enterrado. Another thing that we've noticed uh, along this pathway leading up to the grave is really an abundance of forensic trash, garbage. You can see here, 
biohazardous waste. Uh, I'm not a forensics expert, uh, but I would uh, say that this is probably not the best way to get rid of this waste here in this uh, investigation scene. Obviamente hay una falta de profesionalismo, principalmente de las autoridades de, de aquí de Guerrero en el tema de la identificación. Hubo, hay búsquedas inadecuadas, el proceso de exhumación, el proceso de identificación ha sido caótico, ha sido todo un problema. Eh, los estudiantes y los padres de familia han propuesto ellos un equipo externo, que es el equipo argentino de antropología forense, para que coadyuve en, en el, la investigación. The Argentine Forensic Anthropology Team has been invited to massacre investigations in El Salvador, Congo, Bosnia, Colombia, and many other countries. Parents said they would trust no one else. Back with the volunteer search parties, we witnessed firsthand some of the challenges they faced working in the hillsides around Iguala. El compañero Diego recibió una llamada por telefónica donde lo estaban amenazando y le dijo que él tenía la orden de matar toda la gente inocente y que nosotros nos largáramos que porque si no íbamos nos iba a cargar la verga. Apparently, we are being watched uh, by someone else. Um, so it just kind of gets to the question of who's really in charge here. Al parecer, según es el dueño del encargado de la plaza de aquí, yo ni lo conozco, no sé, pero así lo mientan ahí en el teléfono. Los tres niveles de gobierno le han perdido la confianza porque no han cumplido, han dejado un vacío a la gente en un abandono a los pueblos. Aquí es una impunidad y la, no todos, la mayoría de los políticos en su campaña política han sido financiados. Estaban, estaban involucrados con la delincuencia y fueron financiados y cómo le van a hacer para defender a la ciudadanía. Tiene una cuenta pendiente. Ahora nos, de, nos dimos cuenta que la solución de los problemas, la solución de la corrupción, La solución de la delincuencia está en manos del pueblo. We returned to the Ayotzinapa campus to meet parents and relatives of the missing as the days ticked on without any sign of the 43 normalistas. There we met Felipe de la Cruz Sandoval, a graduate of the Ayotzinapa school and a parent of one of the surviving students. Para nosotros el gobierno estatal y el municipal pues representan la máscara del crimen de la crueldad. Aquí en el estado no es nuevo que el gobierno esté infiltrado o el narco esté infiltrado con el gobierno. Posiblemente no hayan cometido el error que cometieron hoy en matar y desaparecer a estudiantes, porque hoy sabemos que es un delito perpetrado por el estado porque fueron policías los que se los llevaron. October 11th, as more mass graves were being discovered around Iguala, Ángel Aguirre, the governor of Guerrero, announced that none of the 28 human remains so far found in the known pits belonged to any of the missing students. Sí, les puedo afirmar que algunos de los cuerpos que de acuerdo con los avances que se llevan de los peritajes en materia forense no corresponden a los jóvenes de Yotinapa. Protesters, meanwhile, clamored for Aguirre's resignation, blaming him for the lack of governability and rule of law in their state. On October 22nd, Ayotzinapa students and parents marched on Iguala in their first return to the scene of the crimes. After the students and parents had left, other masked individuals looted and torched Iguala City Hall. It was unclear who these other guys were, but local residents and journalists speculated that they might have been sent by the Guerreros Unidos drug gang, or even sent by the government to discredit the otherwise peaceful demonstration. This group moved over to a mall linked to the mayor of Iwala and also ransacked it.
After about an hour of this looting, federal police finally arrived. But by then, people had run off with flat screen TVs and cell phones. On October 23rd, Governor Aguirre responded, stepping down, he said, to allow the investigation to continue freely. Para favorecer un clima político que ponga la atención y la solución de estas prioridades, el día de hoy he decidido solicitar licencia al Honorable Congreso del Estado. Gobernador, ¿no va a hacer una declaración sobre los alcaldes que están involucrados en la delincuencia? La verdad estamos muy enojados porque ellos quieren cerrar el caso ya con entregarnos o eso, que ya son nuestros hijos están muertos. Y nosotros estamos considerando que ellos están vivos. So far, all of the search efforts had focused on finding the remains of possibly murdered students. But the parents were adamant that the efforts should focus on finding their sons alive. No, no, no nos vamos a quedar. Nuestros hijos tienen que aparecer. Porque ellos están vivos, pues, y los tienen. Nosotros sabemos que están vivos y, y los tienen. ¿Por qué no nos los quieren dar? More frustrated than ever, on October 29th, the parents of the missing students traveled back to Mexico City to meet with President Enrique Peña Nieto at Los Pinos, the presidential palace. The press wasn't allowed inside of the meeting, but one of the parents shot this footage on a phone. Estamos aquí con la intención de decirle a usted que le ponemos un plazo no mayor de dos o tres días para saber resultados concretos. Todos están en las cosas. Pues definitivamente los padres de familia, pues con tanto dolor, con tanto coraje, pues lo tomaron como era, ¿no? Otro discurso más de un funcionario que no ha hecho nada, que la ineptitud se refleja en el momento de que a más de 34 días desde la desaparición de los muchachos sigan con la misma respuesta de que no los pueden encontrar. The parents refused to leave Los Pinos until Peña Nieto signed a document promising the government would search for the students alive and not as human remains. The parents, exhausted, angry, returned to Ayotzinapa and decided to gather for another march, demanding their missing are returned. Queremos decirles a todos ustedes, al pueblo de Guerrero, a nuestro país y al mundo entero, que no vamos a descansar hasta que tengan que aparecer los 43 normalistas. On November 4th, the ex Iguala mayor and his wife were apprehended in a rundown house in Iztapalapa, Mexico City. The arrest may have brought the authorities closer to solving the case, but for the Ayotzinapa students and the parents of the missing, their struggle was just beginning. A month had passed since the students disappeared and still there was not a sign of them. For the parents of the missing, their feelings ranged from rage and fury to mourning and sadness to desperation. Cansados no estamos. Estamos con coraje porque el presidente nos dice una cosa y no nos cumple, pues. El gobierno va a pagar por todo lo que está haciendo. Porque este es un crimen de Estado. Es el Estado quien se lo llevó y el Estado no los tiene que devolver. Pues todos los padres estamos enojados, la verdad. Y yo creo que tenemos que dar la vida por los hijos, a lo mejor. Y, ¿Estás dispuesto? Sí, pues? sí estamos dispuestos a, a agarrar las armas más que nada, porque no nos va a quedar de otra manera.
In a statement, Mexico's Attorney General's office said that at its peak, 10,000 federal officers were dedicated to the search. Acting on interrogations, authorities then turned their attention to a large dump on the outskirts of a town called Cocula, about 14 miles from Iguala. Federal officials said that in this lot behind this rusted fence, there is apparently another mass grave. Authorities were led here based on the testimony of suspected members of the Guerreros Unidos cartel. These individuals would be, theoretically, under this line of investigation, the last men who saw these 43 missing students. Federal officials are diving into this river. They're taking small boats and they're looking for more remains. We're also running into uh, federal human rights officials. They're basically here as observers and they say that their only weapons are their notepads and their pens as they observe the work of the federal officials who are still looking for remains that may be these missing students. On November 7th, Mexico's Attorney General, Jesus Murillo Caram, held a press conference and offered a devastating account. Members of the Guerreros Unidos, who were detained and interrogated by authorities, said that Iguala's police had handed over a group of 43 or 44 young men who identified themselves as students. <laughs> Authorities said the alleged perpetrators took them towards Cucula in trucks. En estos vehículos los condujeron al basurero señalado, que es un barranco oculto a la vista, y que para entrar a él se tiene que abrir una reja que limite el acceso al público. Los testimonios y confesiones que hemos recabado aunadas al resto de las investigaciones realizadas apuntan muy lamentablemente al homicidio de un amplio número de personas en la zona de Cucula. Hours before the chilling revelation, the Attorney General traveled by helicopter to Chilpancingo to meet with the parents of the missing students. The meeting took place at an airport hangar, and once again, it was closed to the press. But we obtained this footage from one of the parents. Tengo tres detenidos, que son los que recibieron los muchachos después de que los policías se los entregaron. Y la información que ellos me dan es Realmente una muy mala noticia. Según estos, ellos, a ellos les entregan a los muchachos, los suben en unas camionetas, los interrogan, les hacen muchas preguntas, después los matan, los avientan a la barranca, se bajan, prenden una hoguera que duró 15 horas prendida y los queman. Después recogen los restos, los meten en bolsas de plástico negro, in footage presented by the Attorney General during the press conference, one of the detainees described how they burned the students. El fuego, según declaraciones, duró desde la medianoche hasta aproximadamente las 14 horas del día siguiente, según uno de los detenidos, del día 27 de septiembre. Cuando los peritos analizaron el lugar, encontraron cenizas y restos óseos que por las características que tienen, corresponden a fragmentos de restos humanos. The parents simply refused to believe it. Before coming to terms with the thought that their sons were incinerated beyond recognition, they wanted conclusive proof. Que para que nosotros podamos confiar en los resultados, primero los médicos forenses, que nosotros este, ahora sí que nombramos para tener la seguridad de que son, nos los digan a nosotros. Mientras ellos no nos aseguren que son los compañeros normalistas, los que son los que están ahí en restos, no podemos creer nada. 
The government said it would send the ashes and the remains uncovered in the Kokula dump to experts at the University of Innsbruck in Austria. November 8th, the day after the press conference, marked the 43rd day since the police attack in Iwala, and people took to the streets once more. That night, the fury finally boiled over in Mexico City. At the end of a massive, peaceful march, protesters at the Zocalo Central Square attacked and set fire to the 150-year-old door of the National Palace, although others who were there claimed that provocateurs sent by the government set the fire. That same day, Ayotzinapa students and other supporters set fire once more to the government headquarters in Chilpancingo, Guerrero's capital city. Well, Mexico's government uh, probably thought that with the word uh, released in recent days, that the 43 young men were probably killed in Cocula. And they might have been expecting uh, that the situation could calm down in Guerrero, but as we can see, that's far from happening. The parents are not accepting it, and now we can see that the students are not either. Earlier today, there was a meeting with Ayotzinapa students, and uh, these vehicles here are just <laughs> popping off. Uh, we have the firefighters arriving right now. The parents' insistence on getting a second opinion after the Attorney General's statements might at first almost seem stubborn. Although the government's story sounded plausible enough, multiple articles, op-eds, and even conspiracy theories started popping up questioning the account. When the government's incompetence has been exhibited in almost every step of the way, why would the parents or the population in general believe the official version of events now? Either way, they said they would wait for final proof of their son's fate after the forensics team from Argentina finished investigating. There was a sense, even for those with the most basic knowledge of Mexico's past, that history was repeating itself. On this plaza, the Plaza de las Tres Culturas, on October 2nd, 1968, state forces, led by the Mexico's military, shot indiscriminately as well as snipers in this building uh, right here at Edificio Chihuahua and killed possibly hundreds of innocent students and demonstrators and even innocent civilians, residents of this housing complex called Tlatelolco. And well, here we are again, Mexico as a society facing another atrocious act of state violence. Today is November 20th, 2014, and this is one of three points from where marches uh, will be heading towards the main Zócalo Square here in Mexico City. By then, the protests for the missing students had gone global. Demonstrations were reported before Mexican embassies and consulates, and in public plazas in New York, Buenos Aires, Paris, London, Barcelona, New Delhi, Bangkok, and on and on. The tension grew to the point that pro-government pundits and Peña Nieto supporters started creating frightening counter-arguments, saying that opposition leftist parties, guerrillas, and organized crime were attempting to destabilize the country. But no matter how disliked the Ayotzinapa students may have been for their confrontational practices and leftist principles, nothing could justify a mass extrajudicial killing like the kind authorities said likely occurred. Ellos quieren cerrar el caso ya con que ya nuestros hijos están muertos y nosotros estamos considerando que ellos están vivos. Juegan con nosotros de padre para que nos sientamos el dolor, pues, ¿verdad? Many people in Mexico were left wondering how many other José Luis Abarcas exist out there. How many cities and towns are under the direct control of a gang of drug traffickers or kidnappers? México es una realidad, ¿eh? es un país hermoso, definitivamente. Pudiéramos decir es el paraíso, pero el sistema de gobierno que tenemos es de los más corruptos en el mundo. Y entonces eso es lo que hace que México se vuelva peligroso. More than half of Mexico's states are considered under the influence of organized crime, according to the U.S. State Department. 
the figures really are astounding. Almost 94% of crimes in Mexico are never investigated. Since late 2006, the official number of disappeared in the country is more than 22,000. But independent analysts suggest that number could be far higher. A few of those missing must be among the bones and remains found in the clandestine graves around Iguala. After all the investigations, many questions remain unanswered, among them a very basic one. Why were these students killed? Why would someone want a mass extermination? And who would think that it was an idea worth carrying out? And what happens next? How can Mexico channel the frustration and desperation over this climate of narco-political violence into concrete steps for change? That is the key question facing the country and all of its citizens today.